The Magin L508 radar taillight is the first competitor on the market to go up against the very popular Garmin Varia radar series, which are already into their fourth generation of product, excluding the 315. Now I've spent a few weeks out on the road with the L508, and today I dig into all the details, the ins and outs, and how this thing differs to what else is out there on the market. Is this a cheaper, viable alternative? Well, hang around and you'll find out. Firstly, what is a radar device? In short, a bike radar will detect approaching vehicles, motorbikes or objects and alert you. The detection distance is around 140 metres and it will typically pick up things before you hear them, especially if it's windy or you're on a gravel road. They're definitely not a replacement for your own ears or eyes or common sense, but they are a brilliant device that a lot of people swear by, myself included. On to the technical specifications of the L508, starting off with the connectivity features. It supports Ant Plus Radar and Ant Plus Light standards, which means the L508 is compatible with all bike computers, GPS units, and smartwatches that supports those standards. The charge port is USB-C, and a cable is provided for that. The bike mount is quarter turn mount. However, it is offset by 90 degrees to other radar products. The supplied mount is compatible with round, aero, and D-shape seat posts. The supported light modes are solid, flashing, pulse, peloton, which is a little dimmer. There's also a light off mode with radar still active. The flashing and pulse modes have configurable timing options. The machine radar comes in at 63 grams for the main unit and 21 grams for the mount. The L508 has brake light functionality too with the accelerometers, detecting decelerations and becoming a little brighter as soon as you put the brakes on. Another unique feature to this is an auto sleep mode. After five minutes of inactivity, where the accelerometers detect no movement, let's just say you put the bike up against the wall at the cafe or park it in your garage, it will turn itself off. It will turn itself back on when it detects movement or if you press the button there on the back. The sleep or standby battery burn was around 1% for 24 hours on a bench test here. Speaking of battery life, here are the results from my bench tests in the Llama Lab with solid mode giving five hours and 56 minutes of battery life. Flashing mode set to 2.5 seconds was eight hours 56. Pulse set to four seconds was eight hours 55. And a slightly dimmer peloton mode giving 10 hours and 25 minutes. Now this doesn't include any movement or vehicle detections, so it may not be representative of real world usage, my road testing using Peloton light mode, the battery life was equivalent to that of the RTL 510 or 515, being around six to seven hours of ride time. Passable, but definitely not exceptional. The L508 does have Bluetooth connectivity, but at this point in time, there's only a configuration app for that, not an in-ride companion app like we see with competing products. Machine, do tell me that's in the works, but for now, your alerts will only come from the connected device. So without the companion app being available for this, the closest equivalent Vario radar would be the 510. When that app is released, the equivalent will then move over to the RTL 515, noting that the machine also has a brake light, auto off, and configurable light modes. The L508 will be available in global markets with a price around 129 US. Now this will depend on local taxes, import duties, etc. Here in Australia, this will retail for 199 Aussie dollars and in New Zealand, 239. So the L508 is cheaper than the equivalent Garmin Varia alternatives. However, do be aware that Garmin are now discounting, possibly because there's a competitor on the market. So it's cheaper. Is it equivalent or better out on the road? Let's find out. Okay, first example today is using the Element Bolt version two. Have a rear facing camera and a front facing camera on a road with no shoulder. So very, very handy to have a radar knowing what's coming up behind me. And in just a few seconds, we'll see a white ute or truck pop around the corner and when it gets within 140 meters there we go detection takes place orange alert pops up on screen that will soon turn red because the machine works a little differently with detections I'll talk about that more in a moment and then we have the all clear taking place so that's it in a nutshell perfect scenario there no shoulder on the road I knew the car was coming as soon as it popped around the corner and was within 140 meters and back up the road there is the next car that will be detected by the radar when it hits 140 meters. Those familiar with how the Varia radar works, you've got three different color zones, green, which is all clear. You've got orange, which there is a car or a vehicle detected and it's not going too much faster than you and red, which is danger. The car is going very, very fast. On the machine units, you'll see here, it's green for all clear. As soon as this car speeds up to more than 10 kilometers per hour faster than I am, you get an orange and then it will always go red as soon as the vehicle gets close to you. So you'll get that other alert on the head unit. So things do get very, very beepy. 
because the machine will always go to that red alert state when things get close to you. Just a little difference there between how the machine works and how the VARIA radar works. Next up is an example of the multi-vehicle detection and how well the radar unit does for that. You can see three cars approaching. As soon as the first car gets in that detection zone, there we go, we have a red alert, so it, it thinks it's going fast enough already. And then we have a second car pop up behind that. We have an all clear from the first car, but we now have two cars shown, which is correct. I take the corner at which point one of them drops off and then drops back on. All clear from the second vehicle and then an all clear from the third. So there's a lot happening right there, but the radar got that right, even with that angle on the road and the corner that I took on the bike. So pretty impressive stuff. And the final example with the Bolt 2 is what happens with any radar device when the vehicle isn't actually approaching you. Nothing's detected until that vehicle changes speeds, accelerates towards me, and then it is detected as normal and shown on screen. Switching weather and switching head units over to the Edge 1040 from Garmin. And I was pleasantly surprised to find all the Connect IQ data fields that I use for the Varia radar also work with the machine radar. We have the battery indication on screen there, green because everything is good. And we have the My Bike Radar Traffic field there too. With the vehicle count, which was 9, now goes to 10 after that vehicle passed me and it recorded the last passing speed to 93 kilometers per hour. That's also written to the fit file, so I can go and review that later on. And speaking of that review, here is the fit file loaded into mybiketraffic.com, showing us where every vehicle was detected, but not only that, the detection distance and speed. So that was the car that had just passed us before. Vehicle range was 131 meters where the first detection took place and it was traveling at 94 kilometers per hour. There's probably gonna be a bit of fudge factor here how it calculates that speed, but 94. And then as it passes me, they slow down one kilometer per hour. That's very nice of them to do that. Rider speed's also recorded. So it's super cool to have this information saved onto the fit file and then reviewed later on and also just for safety purposes. It's just such good information to have with this Connect IQ field. Another vehicle up here I've just pulled up, so detection range 140 meters, 89 kilometers per hour, slowing down to 77 kilometers per hour as they pass me. And that range was at 12 meters from where I was. So super handy to have this later on if you ever need to go back and review it. So let's just see in town here, car's going a little bit slower. What's our detection range? 62 meters. 46 meters, there's a few roundabouts as cars turn out of side streets here, so you won't get the full 140 meters in town. Oh, 146 there. Again, this is worth a whole video in itself, mybiketraffic.com, and the data field to load if you have a compatible Garmin Edge unit or compatible watch is the My Bike Radar Traffic data field. Definitely worth loading this up if you have compatible units. With the radar functionality confirmed working, now a closer look at the light functionality. And the brake light here, will come on for only a few seconds under heavy braking and then return back to the mode it was set to, which was peloton mode. So still under heavy braking here until we come to a stop, the light mode had returned. Now this is exactly what happens on vehicle detection too. That flashing mode will only take place for a few seconds upon vehicle detection. And while there's still a vehicle in the zone, so to speak, it will return back to whatever mode you have. So peloton mode here you're seeing on screen. So there's another car coming behind this one, but nothing's changed. And then we get another car coming into vision of the radar, but nothing changed. The light mode remains because it already had that initial detection a few seconds of flashing and then it returned back to its normal mode. But things are a little different with this unit as compared to the Varia radars. The Varia radars will continue to flash or go to a flashing mode during the entire detection period until an all clear takes place. And the final test is with the radar on but the light off, the light will still illuminate upon that initial detection for a few seconds and then return back to the off state for the LEDs. Now, this is where things get a little tricky, safety-wise. So it's had that initial detection of that first vehicle, so it's on the flashing, and then return back to off-state. Now, a third vehicle comes into sight now, but they haven't seen any flashing whatsoever. And then a fourth comes in, by which time none of these vehicles have seen the light flash or change mode. Now, if you have the light on, illuminated all the time anyway, maybe not a big one, but I would like that flashing state to remain for the entire detection period through to that all-clear. Something else of note, when controlling the light mode with the Ant Plus light control widget on a Garmin Edge unit, I only had options for solid, flash, 
or off mode. Peloton mode was not there as it is when pairing with a Garmin Varia radar. Pulse mode, I'll give a leaf pass. That might be something that Magin have added themselves to the light control, might not be part of the spec, but I definitely know that Peloton mode is there and selectable when pairing a Garmin Varia radar. Also on the topic of Ant Plus light control is the Magin L508 won't broadcast or wake up to any Ant Plus light connectivity when you turn your head unit on like other lights may. It will wake up if in sleep mode with motion or the button press. People with an eye for detail may have noticed I wasn't using the supplied mount for my testing of this unit. I was using the KOM Cycling Garmin Varia mount, which should now just be called the radar mount because the inner puck can be turned 90 degrees to be compatible with the Magin L508. Now the supplied mount, while it works quite well, just isn't as secure as this aftermarket one that I'm using here from KOM Cycling. So if you want to use the original mount supplied, works fine. Also comes with a lanyard, but this locks things in rock solid. My overall conclusions of the L508 is for the price and performance, it's a great little unit. I would have loved to have seen a little bit more battery life squeezed out of this at the expense of maybe being a heavier unit, maybe a little larger as well. I would have been okay with that. And I'd definitely love to see that light mode be flashing during the detection period as a whole, not just for the initial detection, then going back to the original mode. Maybe something Magin can update in their firmware and the app at a later date. The huge upside with this is it does support the Ant Plus radar standards and the Ant Plus light standards, meaning it's compatible with all head units that support those standards out there. You saw how it also supports those Connect IQ data fields, which is an added bonus. Those developers are likely to remove the word Varia from their apps and just call it Radar from now on. So with the popularity of the Garmin Varia radar, I'm keen to see how these go out on the bike for anybody who picks one up. If you do, let me know in the comments below. And with that, thanks for watching. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. Hit subscribe to support this channel. There's also a membership button there which helps out too. We'll see you soon.